Riddler's the villain this week, eh? Oh, that hack who stole my color scheme and just asks questions like a lousy game show host? Yeah. By that logic, aren't you just a cut-rate late-night host? Did you just compare me to the likes of Jimmy Fallon? I guess I did. Drain! You say the sweetest things. <laughs> and now it all makes sense why I've never understood your sense of humor. Welcome back to another episode of Batman the Animated Recap. Last time, we covered Heart of Steel Part 2, featuring an artificial intelligence creating robotic duplicates to replace influential Gothamites. This time, we're getting the series introduction of one Edward Nigma, aka The Riddler. Season 1, Episode 40 of Batman the Animated Series, If You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich? We open on the exterior of Competitron, a company known for making a game called Riddle of the Minotaur. We hear the voice of Daniel Mockridge asking if Edward Nigma has come into work yet, to which the assistant says no. We then transition inside the building to see Edward getting off the elevator with his face buried in a magazine. We pull back to a wide shot of office cubicles that has a striking resemblance to a labyrinth, you know, a place where one might find a minotaur. When Nigma gets to his office, he makes a shocking discovery. Where's my office? What's the meaning of this? You're out of here. You're history. We find out that Nigma is the creator of the Riddle of the Minotaur game that has made Competitron so much money. Apparently, he hasn't seen any of that money and is threatening to sue for royalties, so Mockridge is firing him. Nigma says that Mockridge is a fool and that his greed is no match for Nigma's intelligence, to which Mockridge replies with the title of the episode. If you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Ha! Huh, another rich Gothamite creating a supervillain by screwing over their talented subordinate. You'd think one of them would remember what happened to one of their pals from the country club and not make the same mistake. But they never do. That's because greed is dumb, Professor Crane. Nigma. Sorry I'm not appearing in person, Batman, but since I've never been invited to join my fellow criminals in critiquing these episodes, I felt it was only fitting to kill one of them as payback. What? That's right! I've placed a bomb in close proximity to one of you, and if the Batman fails to solve my riddles, it goes boom. And don't try to escape. The bomb will explode if you attempt to leave. Come now, Riddler. I've always respected you and your methods. Yeah, you're almost as brilliant as I am. <laughs> no, no, no. You're much smarter than Bane. Is he, though? Shut up. Yes, so much smarter than Bane. Jeez, Crane, can you put your lips any further up his question mark tattooed ass? Yeah. I'm with the Joker. F*** this guy. If it were up to me, I would just set this thing off now, but it's not. Here's your first riddle, Batman, and this one's easy, so you won't even have to give it a second thought. When does 2 plus 2 equal 5? No cheating, Dark Knight. Even though I'm not physically here, the Riddler is watching you. What about me? Do you have a riddle for me? Oh, Robin. I... forgot you were there. Um... I'll get you next time. Man. I'll check back in a few, Batman. All right, let's put this review on hold. Batman, figure it out. No need to stop. I've got some ideas. Oh, good, he's got some ideas. What's wrong, Crane? You sound scared. <laughs> How dare you? I fear nothing. I'm just allergic to explosions, that's all. Fine. Continue recapping the episode. We cut to two years later at Wayne Industries, where Daniel Mockridge is pitching to Bruce Wayne and Lucius Fox for a deal that would move Competitron to Gotham. Bruce is irritated by Mockridge's pitch, but mentions that he wants the deal because of all the jobs it would bring to the city. During the presentation, Mockridge sees something outside the window that startles him. To. Mockridge hastily leaves the meeting, saying that something has come up. Bruce and Lucius look outside and read the message on the scroll, which transitions us to the Batcave, where Bruce is pondering the meaning of the message. While he's doing that, Dick is playing Riddle of the Minotaur on the Bat computer. Holy sh! I'm in this episode? I mean, <laughs> of course I'm in this episode. I play a major role in solving it, right, Batman? Two things. One, language, and two, zip it. I'm trying to think. Well, excuse me, Batman. 
Sorry. Alfred arrives and Dick proceeds to demonstrate various aspects of the computer game to him, including its Super Mario sounding effects. Batman comes to the realization that Mockridge owns a nightclub called The Wasteland, which I have to say is an awful name for a nightclub, but when Robin hears the name, he says, The Wasteland? Oh, it's a dead end, see? Come on. Daniel Mockridge is walking into a trap. Is it really a trap, though? Mockridge knew who he was dealing with the moment he read the message, and he knows they're not on good terms. He'd have to be some kind of fool not to expect something. You're trespassing, Nigma. Get out. Okay. Fool. Time's up, Batman. Have you solved my riddle? Yep. Two plus two equals five when it's 1984. Are you sure? Of course. You gave two big clues to it. You said I wouldn't need to give it a second thought, and you said Riddler is watching you. Second thought is double think, and Riddler is watching you is Big Brother is watching you. Both elements from the George Orwell novel, 1984, where two plus two equals five. Very good, Dark Knight, but I did say that was the easy one. This next one is more of a challenge, but a keen mind like yours shouldn't need to look to the heavens for guidance. This artisan stool has been around since the 1750s, but no one can touch it. That's all you get. What is it? I'll be back. Huh, I don't even know why he left. I'm sure Batman already has this one figured out. Uh, sure. What's something the young people say when they're confident about something? Totes. Yeah, totes. Why do I feel like he's lying? Nigma plays to Mockridge's greed, making him think there's a new deal to be made. But first, he must solve the puzzle of the rings, which results in... Riddler has a couple of goons grab Mockridge, but before they can leave with him, Batman and Robin make a smashing entrance. Ugh, as if this episode didn't have enough puns already. I'm going to allow it! Thank you! As Batman and Robin look around, Edward Nigma introduces himself as his new persona. They have to match wits with... the Riddler. Why the hell does he not have a nose? What? No, he's got a nose. It... Doesn't he? I think there's a vague outline of something in the shadow. A shadow nose? <laughs> what nose lurks on Nigma's face? The shadow nose. Batman ruins the Riddler's introduction by immediately calling him out by his real name. Nigma then sicks his two goons on the dynamic duo, which starts out fine, but then somewhere along the way, Batman forgets how to fight. <laughs> I didn't forget anything. You've seen how these psychos deal with incompetence. If I completely embarrass these thugs, it's likely to get them killed. I'm keeping them alive by letting them get their licks in. Then why did I have to come to your rescue with that cart? Shut it! During the fight, Nigma activates some disco lights that spin out of control and light the building on fire. After Robin assists Batman with the thugs, Batman pushes Robin out of the way of fiery debris. Nigma then shoots a giant finger trap around Robin and uses the distraction to escape with Mockridge in tow. Batman gets Robin out of the building and then seems irritated that his sidekick is on fire. Hey, it's getting hot in here. Get me out of this thing. Of course I was irritated. Stop, drop, and roll. They teach you that in kindergarten. I didn't know I was on fire. And besides that, you were carrying me. I couldn't drop if I wanted to. Excuses, excuses. We cut to Batman and Robin in the Batmobile, with Batman explaining how he knows who the Riddler is, when suddenly all the lights in Gotham start blinking. Batman quickly figures out that it's Morse code, and we see that it's the Riddler at the Gotham Light power plant intentionally sending the message to lure Batman into a trap. Why? You got the guy you wanted. Batman knows who I am. We'll have to put him and his snot-nosed cohort out of the way first. Time's up, Batman. Do you have the answer to my riddle? Hang on, I have a question for you first. Did you intentionally position that guard in a way that would make his shadow look like a question mark? And if so, how long did it take you to figure out the positioning and the lighting so that it would look that way from an overhead camera shot that didn't exist in the story? Is this one always so inquisitive? Oh yeah, he can be a real killjoy sometimes. Fine. Yes, I positioned him like that. I minored in art at Gotham University. Very minor from the looks of it. What was that? He said you were bad at art. No, no, I didn't say that. I implied it. Not the same thing. Answer time, Batman. 
I'm suddenly getting an itchy trigger finger. Right. An artisan's tool that no one can touch that's been around since 1750. And he said a keen mind wouldn't need to look to the heavens for guidance. That must be a clue. Sailors used to have to look towards the stars to navigate their ships at night. I know a lot of seamen. <laughs> I'll bet you do. I don't like your tone. I do know a lot of seamen. In fact, I know seamen from all over the world. <laughs> stop. Oh, just stop. Oh, oh, I can't take it. Oh. I'm still waiting. The tool that can't be touched must be a constellation. Silum Sculptorium. It's Latin for the engraver's chisel, a constellation that was discovered in 1750. I didn't realize this was a team game. Fine. I'll give you that one, but you have to answer the final riddle on your own. Bring it. I've just shot Daniel Mockridge, then held him underwater for a time before hanging him. Right after, he and I had a lovely chat. How is that possible? Be back soon. Batman works out that the Morse code message is another riddle. When is the Minotaur's owner as high as an elephant's high? What's as high as an elephant's high? Corn. Batman deduces that maze is another word for corn, meaning that Mockridge is being held at the Riddle of the Minotaur maze at a recently built amusement park. Upon arriving at the maze, the Riddler gives Batman and Robin some specific instructions before they can enter. Throw down your utility belts. It'll be more interesting that way, don't you think? Well, since you've had villains try to separate you from your utility belt in the past, I assume you have like a backup belt hidden in the lining of your cape or something? Oh, yeah. That would have been a great idea. Wait, so you didn't have anything? I did have my little glove computer that we established earlier in the episode. And that we never see again in any other episode. Shut it! Since Robin has played the computer game, Batman lets him take point, but Robin admits he's only ever made it through half the game. At a certain point, a Golden Griffin statue shows up behind the pair, and Robin says it just blocks off the way you came, but then... Um, either those walls are made of paper mache, or that griffin is firing anti-tank rounds. It's actually a lousy design. With that thing punching holes in all the walls, kind of defeats the whole maze aspect of things. I heard that. Eh, sue me. Careful, Scarface. He's known to do just that. Batman and Robin encounter a sign that reads Losers Ahead, which leads to... Losers Ahead? Stop! Huh. Have I misjudged the Riddler this whole time? This death maze sounds like a hoot! The boys take a wrong turn, which leads to the large flying hand of fate coming after them. They manage to avoid it and head down the correct path, which leads to another puzzle. We've got to use one of these keys. Yes, but which one? And why are they labeled A, C, and D? They try the D key, which results in two spinning blades being shot at them. Batman goes to try the A key, but Robin stops him, having figured out the puzzle. It's a musical puzzle. The key of D has two sharps. The key of A has three. And did I get a thank you? No. Look, I don't say this enough, but it's important that you know. I could have easily dodged those blades if there'd been three of them. Oh, come on! Batman intentionally goes the wrong way to lure the hand of fate. He reprograms it with his glove computer and uses it to take him and Robin directly to the center of the maze, where they must solve the Minotaur's riddle before it kills Mockridge. I have no muscle, yet I rule two hemispheres. What am I? In a rather anticlimactic turn of events, Batman solves the riddle immediately. That simple. The human brain, four lobes and two hemispheres, and it's the only thing Edward Nigma respects. Nigma orders the Minotaur to kill them anyway, but Batman uses the Hand of Fate to easily take it down. While Mockridge is safe, the Riddler gets away, revealing that he was never there to begin with. And by the time you get out of the maze, I'll be out of the city. I do love that we have another supposedly broke villain with the means to outfit and or modify existing tech with his remote control death traps and fly private planes out of Gotham. Well, of course I didn't make money on the Minotaur game, but a brilliant mind such as mine will always find avenues to success. Perhaps you've heard of a little site called Ask Jeeves? I invented that and used the proceeds for my little Mockridge revenge operation. Ask Jeeves? I'll have to Google what that is. Anyway, the episode ends with the Wayne Industries buyout of Competitron being successful. Robin says how wrong it was that Mockridge got to walk away from the deal with $10 million, but Bruce points out that the Riddler is still out there. Mockridge may have his money, 
but he won't be sleeping well. <gasps> All right, Batman, it's time for your answer. Right. Shot, held underwater, hung, and then chat. How? Um... You got this, Batman. Just, uh, picture the riddle in your head. No helping. I'm not helping, I'm motivating. That's helping. No more stalling. Your answer now. It's possible because... Because... You shot a photo of Mockridge, yes. held it underwater to wash off the chemical developers, and then hung it to dry. Curse you, Dark Knight! Now I've got a riddle for you, Nigma. Why's the animation in your introductory episode so bad? Because I... I... I don't know. I only featured in four episodes. Why would they give my debut episode to a subpar animation studio? Why? 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 <laughs> He'll be trying to figure that out for years. Well, Batman, uh, as much as it pains me to admit this, I suppose thanks are in order for saving one of our lives. Don't thank me. Thank Robin. He clued me into the answer. <laughs> and everyone at school laughed when I took those photography classes. Who's laughing now? He may have given you the clue, but it was your training that allowed him to be so quick on his feet. Okay, fine. You can thank me. Damn it! This episode has me torn. I find the origin story for the Riddler rather generic, considering, you know, the care that's been taken with many of the other villain origins we've seen on the show. Couple that with the really awful animation, and you have a pretty unspectacular episode. What the episode has going for it, for me personally, is all the Greek mythology references in the computer game and maze, and the performance of John Glover as the Riddler. I'm already a big fan of John Glover as it is, and his work on this show has ensured that he is the voice I hear whenever I think of the Riddler. Uh, what did you think, Scarecrow? The trouble with the Riddler is that the writers need to attempt to be as clever as he is supposed to be with his riddles, which is not always an easy thing to do. I think we've proven that with our own Riddler here. Careful, Professor. While the episode has a couple of good riddle moments, most of them are pretty pedestrian. I would expect the Riddler to challenge Batman on an intellectual level, but this just turned into a death trap laden obstacle course similar to the Mad Hatter's first appearance. 2.5 out of 5 exploding disco lights. Riddle me this. Who gets early access to videos and behind the scenes content? The following supporters on Patreon, that's who. Jay Booth, Sean Hart, Jimmy Purcell, Rick Maxwell, Tony Ebers, Jessica Tim, E.C., J.R. Green, Emilio Flores, and A.J. Nowacki. If you'd like to join them in the Elysian Fields, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash jackofallnerds. Join us next time when we'll be covering Joker's Wild. Finally, another me episode. I'm so tired of talking about all these other clowns. <laughs> <sighs> Till next time, kitties! All right, Nigma, level with us. Who are you going to blow up? My money's on the professor. I beg to differ. Bane would be a much better person to blow up. Yeah, and don't you forget it. I'm afraid I served up a bit of a fib. I wasn't going to blow one of you up. Oh, thank goodness. Whew. Nice. Boring. I was going to blow up all of you. Man, if you just hadn't answered him, think of how many problems that would have solved. True, but you know my policy on killing. Yeah, but you wouldn't have killed them. Riddler would have. Your hands would be clean. Good point. Hey, Nigma, Got any more riddles? Now see here. Not cool. You rat f***. <laughs> you don't have to solve one of my riddles to support the channel. Just give the video a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when more of these videos go up. Remember, the Riddler is watching you.